Back in May, I did a video looking at what Solskjaer's plan was for United in this summer transfer window. David Ornstein from the BBC said that Solskjaer wanted certain positions covered and certain signings made. I'm going to be discussing them individually in this video and taking a look at whether Solskjaer's plan has changed. Have United got the targets that we set out at the start of the summer or has it changed and has Solskjaer's signings changed as a consequence. I'm going to run through all of that. Before I begin, this video is sponsored by Unibet, who are supporting United People's TV over this transfer window. As you know, there's loads of transfer content on United People's TV, but there's a lot more fantastic, insightful content over on the Unibet blog, which you should check out. I'm going to be discussing one of the articles today on Harry Maguire by Andy Mitten. And if you want to find out a bit more about it, follow the link in the description. I recommend it. Lots of new and insightful stuff over there. But let's get straight into this video. So this summer, you know, David Ornstein, sort of considered the king of Arsenal transfer news last summer, has departed Arsenal because they're not signing anybody and he's become United's go-to guy. He was leading the story with Aaron Wan-Bissaka, was spot on the entire way. So United fans do consider him a reliable source in terms of what's happening with United in this summer transfer window. And back in May, as I said, he said that United were looking at key signings and key positions and the first one was at centre-back. And who was that? One of their priorities is at centre-half, as we know. Uh, Khalidou Koulibaly from Napoli. Um, there, I'm told, they love him. And uh, the only problem with that is he's extremely expensive. Uh, Napoli don't need to sell. I think in 2021, he has a buyout clause of 150 million euros uh, and he's got a few years left on his contract so either they'll be looking for a, a younger talent in that position who can emerge to make the position his own or somebody prove so david ornstein saying that solskjaer wanted kalidou koulibaly but that has now changed to harry maguire 70 million is the bid that united have rejected for maguire and reports suggest that leicester want upwards of 80 to 90 million pounds for harry maguire i mean that's that's Kalidou Koulibaly's sort of money. You know, David Ornstein there saying that United were sceptical about going towards Koulibaly because of the price of him. But if you're going to pay £90 million for Harry Maguire, you may as well pay a little bit more and get Kalidou Koulibaly. Now, if United do sign Maguire, I've got no doubt it would be an outstanding signing. He's better than Bay. he's better than Rojo, he's better than Tuan Zebe, Smalling, Jones, Lindelof, any centre-back we've got. But in the same vein, Kalidou Koulibaly is so much better than Harry Maguire. Now, as I said, if United really are willing to spend 90 million on Maguire, I don't think we should settle. I think we should spend a little bit more and sign Koulibaly. Surely, it, it makes sense on paper. If you're willing to spend that much, you may, there's no point in settling when you're spending that much because that's more than Virgil van Dijk money. So you would be expecting a Virgil van Dijk player. And Maguire's not on that level. But Koulibaly is. Of course, I would be happy if United did sign Maguire. And over on the Unibet blog today, there's a fantastic piece there written by Andy Mitten, which offers a real bit of insight into why Maguire would like to move to United. Andy's written that Harry Maguire always wanted to join United and that it was a personal phone call from Sir Alex Ferguson himself that made a big difference back when Maguire was actually playing at Old Trafford for Sheffield United in the FA Youth Cup. It's a really interesting piece that offers some new insight into why Maguire would want that move to Old Trafford. So I'd encourage you to go over and read it. There will be a link in the description straight to that article. But it sounds like Maguire wants United. United want Maguire now, but if we're going to pay that much, should we settle on Maguire or pay a bit more for Koulibaly? Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And the next position David Ornstein was discussing was right back. Uh, also a right back. Aaron Wambasaka is uh, very much on Manchester United's radar, along with Manchester City. But they're also keen United to develop Di Diogo Dalot and the young Ethan Laird. Wambasaka was the guy, and Wambasaka was the guy that United got. We got our top target. Tough negotiations, but ultimately we did very well there. We kept the Zaha 25% clause. We got him for 45 million plus bonuses, which will make it more towards 55. But we got our man. Solskjaer got the right back that he wanted, his top target. And I don't think United really have done that all too often in the last few years. So there's a big tick there beside Wan-Bissaka. But other than centre-back and right-back, what about midfield? 
Um, central midfield could be contingent on what happens with Paul Pogba, of course. So David there is really saying that Paul Pogba's future and what happened there would determine what happened with United in midfield this summer. And I'll be honest, it's still all a bit confusing as to what United are properly doing in midfield because there are two signings clearly that United want to make. Bruno Fernandes and Sean Longstaff. Now, with Bruno Fernandes, he will be an outstanding signing. Absolutely. So many goals and assists for sports in Lisbon last year. If he came into the team, he would offer a different alternative to Paul Pogba. We wouldn't have to rely on Pogba having a good game for United to have any sort of midfield attacking threat because Bruno Fernandes would have that as well. Good at set pieces too. A young player, 24, plenty of room to grow. He'd clearly be an outstanding signing. But it's not really in the position where United properly need to strengthen this summer, and that's in defensive midfield. Now, Sean Longstaff is, but he wouldn't be expected to be an immediate impact in that first team, would he? We'd expect Longstaff to be more of a Dan James type signing. Somebody who would be brought in with potential, who we'd expect to develop into a better player at Old Trafford, rather than coming in straight away and making a big impact in midfield but United need that sort of signing. Then you look at what City and Spurs are doing by signing Rodri and Dombele. Tillemans to Leicester too. United need a defensive midfield reinforcement and have done all summer long. That's probably the position I would say in midfield that we needed to strengthen the most but instead we're looking at Fernandes maybe that's because we're planning for Pogba to leave. I don't think Pogba will leave this summer but maybe that's just a step ahead. And Longstaff, for me, isn't good enough straight away to make the impact we need in midfield that Ndombele and Rodri will do at City and Spurs, respectively. United still need reinforcements there. And I don't know who we're going after. As I said, Ruben Nevers has always been the one that I want to see United go after, but that's been very quiet all summer. You've also got Wilfred and Didi from Leicester. But seeing as Leicester are playing hardball over Maguire, they'd probably do the same thing over Ndidi. I don't know what's going on in defensive midfield there. And whether that's been part of the plan all along, but Bruno Fernandes in attacking midfield would be a great signing. Longstaff would be a good signing, I suppose, for the future. I don't know enough about him. He's hardly played any football in Newcastle, really. So it's an unknown quantity. But we'd still need a defensive midfield reinforcement there, as far as I'm concerned. So moving on from midfield, what about right wing? That was clearly a weakness for United last year. And it's a position where Solskjaer wanted his big big signing this summer but 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 the big one um which n not many people have spoken about yet is, uh, is Jadon Sancho now Jadon Sancho is among the top targets I understand of Manchester United and Manchester United would be his preferred option if he was to come back to the Premier League during this transfer window I'm told that a couple of months ago it was looking like this would be nailed on however he is reluctant to give up Champions League football. He's reluctant to join an unstable club. He wants stability and he wants to win things. Uh, I'm told never say never, but at, as things stand, it's 50-50 on that one. PSG, Juve, Real Madrid and Barcelona have also shown firm interest in him, but there's been no other interest from Premier League clubs. He won't move just for the sake of it. It has to be right for him. And the fee this summer would be in excess of £100 million. Jadon Sancho would have been an outstanding signing for United this summer. But I feel that move for him was almost dead before it really started because we didn't qualify for the Champions League. That's clearly an important part to Sancho's career. He's only 19, but he's been smashing it in the Bundesliga. And he feels he's already ready for the top level. Next summer, maybe we can go and get Jadon Sancho. And I hope we do because I think he's going to be in a... A couple of years' time, he's going to be considered up there with the world's best, towards that top 20 players, I think, anyway. Let me know what you think about that. But Jaden Sancho aside, we have strengthened there. We've got Dan James. But like Sean Longstaff, he'll have little expectation on his shoulders. He won't be expected to come in and make an immediate impact in that team straight away. I'm excited about him, though. I really am. You know, bags of pace, natural pace. A proper winger that can actually go on the outside of players. United... Combining him with wan Saka down the right could completely transform our right-hand side. Switching those from, from Young and Lingard to... No, well, no, it's just not a good partnership. To wan Saka and James, it's a big upgrade in terms of what they can offer. A genuine threat down the right-hand side. So, while Dan James isn't Jadon Sancho, it's at least a new player in a position where United needed to strengthen. And hopefully the young, hungry intensity of Dan James will help United's other players in those positions 
to improve around them because competition should help these players develop. And maybe Solskjaer will surprise us all by signing another right winger. But given that we need a new centre-back, I'd argue two, potentially three midfielders, I don't think we can really afford to get another right winger this summer. I think we'll go all out for Jadon Sancho next summer. So taking a look at what Solskjaer's plan may have been a couple of months ago to now, things have certainly changed. You know, Koulibaly might have been the man that we wanted, but Maguire stepped up. But are we really going to pay that much? Why not just go for Koulibaly? We got the right back we wanted, and that's a major thing. Central midfield, I still don't really know. Bruno Fernandes and Sean Longstaff clearly are two players that Solskjaer wants. But I think we still need more there. And we didn't really get the right winger we wanted in Jadon Sancho, but Dan James is somebody with bags of potential. So clearly we're making strides here towards making this team and this squad capable of challenging for the Premier League. But we're still nowhere near we need to be to catch up with City and Liverpool. And there's still a lot of work to do in this summer transfer window. Now, what do you expect from United in the next month? Something has certainly changed in the last couple of months from May. But what do you expect from United now in the last four weeks before the Premier League season kicks off against Chelsea? In August. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe. Until next time, though, take it easy.